Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with the first of a series of tutorials showing you how to take perfectly good footage and uh, ruin it with digital artifacts and analog style TV warp effects. Now uh, today's tutorial uh, will be covering the reinterlacing of progressive scan footage. So essentially we'll be taking this uh, spinning coin shot and as you can see we've got these nice soft edges because it was shot in uh, 25p and uh, turning into this rather ghastly interlaced nightmare. Uh, if I uh, zoom in on both you can get a clearer idea of what I'm after. Now 25p as you probably know shoots the entire frame at once so you don't get any of these uh, what they call comb artifacts at the edges of moving objects. Now I'll actually be showing you two ways of achieving this effect. The first way is a bit of a a quick cheat for when you're in a hurry and you know absolute accuracy isn't important. Um, the second is a slightly more sophisticated method for when you really want to kind of nail down that mini DV interlaced style. So we've got a nice uh, spinning coin and I can't tell you how many um, attempts it took me to get it to land in front of the lens. One of the reasons that this footage is actually a really good piece of uh, material to use for this effect is because we've got a lot of high motion and it settles down to an almost entirely static image. So enough chatter. Um, let's start with the uh, the first technique, the simple cheat technique. So go to your effects and presets panel and find the wave warp effect and drag it onto your footage. Now if I scroll out so you can see the entire frame, you can see that's nothing like what we want. So uh, we're going to go to our effect controls panel and make a few changes. Under the wave type effect, change it from sine to noise. And that will give you this nice jagged line effect rather than the smooth wave warp we had previously. And change the direction to zero. And that'll reverse it from a vertical warp to a horizontal warp. So you can kind of see where we're going with this. Next step is to reduce the wave width to one. Now if I scroll back in, you can see that we've already got pretty much the interlace effect we're looking for. But if you want to make it more pronounced, you just increase the wave height. So I'll make it really, really jarring. Take it up to uh, a wave height value of 40. And that makes it really obvious. Um, last thing we need to do is uh, turn off the wave speed because we don't want this effect to be animated. So just uh, change the wave speed to zero. And as you can see, we've got something that looks sort of like interlacing but it's not actually that accurate. So as I said, if you're looking for a quick and easy cheat, this is the way to go. But uh, the one thing that really gives it away is when you have a static object like this. Now if I take the, uh, the wave height back down to about 10, that coin isn't moving. So really there shouldn't be any interlace uh, artifacting at all. So uh, there are limitations to this effect, but uh, it's kind of handy if you're in a pinch. So how do we do it right? Well, the answer to that is slightly more complicated. Essentially, we need to emulate the offset fields of an interlaced digital video signal um, by creating a series of scan lines. Now, the way we do that is go to Effects and Presets and find the grid effect, and drag that onto your footage. Now, that gives us this uh, default setting, which again, nothing like what we're after. So go to the Effect Controls panel and select width and height sliders. Now increase the width value to something way, way wider than your existing frame. So I'll go to 4000. And that just gets rid of most of the uh, vertical bars. And we can get rid of the one in the middle by holding down shift and dragging the X value until that last remaining vertical bar is off screen. Now you go to the height slider and reduce it not to one, but to a value of two. And then you reduce the border to one. Now if I scroll right in, you can see we now have this series of alternating scan lines going across, but no image. We get the image back by going to blending mode and selecting stencil alpha. And basically that uses the transparency values of the overlying grid to reveal the uh, image underneath. So that's half the way there. 
Now what we need to do is duplicate the coin spin or whatever footage you're using by hitting Control and D and duplicating it. And we just need to offset the Y value by adding 1 to the anchor point. So it's uh, 360 at the moment, so we'll take it to 361. Now when I scroll in, you see we've got our entire frame back. Which is great, but it's nothing like what we want it to look like. So go to the beginning of the timeline and just drag the top coin spin AVI or your, your top footage and just drag it forward by one frame. And if we take a look at what that does and zoom in nice and close, you can see we've got this interlace style footage. Now it's not going to be perfect, I'll warn you in advance. The, uh, the frame offset does actually cancel out if you look at it frame by frame, so it's not quite um, an accurate portrayal of uh, interlaced footage but when it's moving fast enough no one's ever going to notice and as you can see now when I play it back we've got that horrible interlaced look and feel to it and uh, the best thing about this effect is it's now motion sensitive so when you've got a lot of high speed motion you've got these extreme combing artifacts and then when the object settles they disappear. So that's more like the uh, the interlaced look that we're aiming for. But finally, due to the way that After Effects handles transparency and the uh, sub-pixel accuracy of the, the software, we've actually lost a lot of the, um, the image brightness. If I uh, turn off the effect for a second, you can see that the original image was actually pretty bright. But now we've got this 50% uh, darker version, which is uh, not ideal. And the simple way to fix that is to basically grab an untampered with version of the original footage and drop it right on the bottom. So if I zoom into 200% so you can see it, now we have that interlaced appearance that we were after. Now in future tutorials I'll be showing you how to add noise, add static, add distortion, add color separation, add ghosting, all the kind of horrible things that make uh, perfectly good footage look crap. Um, so keep an eye open for them. In the meantime, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.